Hello everyone, in this video we are going to discuss maximum in-plane shear stress in which we will be having first the derivation of maximum shear stress formula then we are going to have the derivation of the normal stress at a plane of maximum shear. So let's first discuss what we mean by maximum in-plane shear stress. So an object which is being applied with the multiple forces, there would be a plane where we are going to have the maximum normal stresses which we called as principal stresses. There will also be an, a plane where we are going to have the maximum shear. So in this video we are going to drive the formula to calculate the maximum shear stress, the plane on which we are going to have the maximum shear stress. So in previous videos if you recall we had the formula to calculate the shear stress in any x dash y dash plane. So this was the formula. Now since we want to have a plane on which we are going to have the maximum shear stress, so that can be done if we differentiate this formula with respect to theta and then equating it equal to zero, then we are going to have the plane on which we are having the maximum shear stress. So recalling the basics of the differentiation, we know that the differentiation of sine theta with respect to theta would be cos theta and for cos theta it will be minus sine theta. So now let's do the calculations. So this is the coefficient so there won't be any change on this. So I keep it as same. So sigma x minus sigma y divide by 2. Now since uh, this is sine 2 theta so this will now become cos theta and also this is uh, 2 theta so the differentiation of uh, 2 theta will be 2 so let's multiply the 2 here and this will be then cos 2 theta similarly this is coefficient so cos 2 theta the differentiation of cos 2 theta will be minus sine 2 theta the differentiation of 2 theta would be 2 and equating it equal to 0 so this is negative if you can shift on the other side and that will become positive uh, even though this will also be a negative so it's up to us whether we shift uh, this cos theta or sine theta so let's shift this cos to theta on the other side so left hand side we are just being left with tau xy sine 2 theta now one thing we can notice here that the 2 is common in both the terms so dividing this with the 2 then we are just being left with this term so when this term is being shifted on the other side this will be then positive now we can place the trigonometric relationship on one side like sine 2 theta keeping over here and then shifting this cos 2 theta on the left hand side. So on the right hand side then we will be left with sigma x minus sigma y divided by 2 and this is whole divided by tau xy. So this is negative so there would be a negative sign over here or you can write the negative sign over here as well. Now we can write this equation in terms of a right angle triangle because uh, the sine 2 theta or cos 2 theta is equal to 10 theta and in a right angle triangle the numerator is perpendicular and denominator is base. So this can be written like this. Now in next step, so we know the formula to calculate the shear stress at any plane which is rotated theta by counterclockwise. Now we have got this right angle triangle where we are going to have the maximum shear stress. So using this right angle triangle we can have the values of uh, sine 2 theta and cos 2 theta. So in this right angle triangle we don't have half hypotenuse but we can calculate since the perpendicular and base is known. So let me quickly write it down. Now we can have the sine 2 theta as perpendicular upon hypotenuse perpendicular is minus minus is on the whole keep in mind I can write it like this and then the hypotenuse this is the hypotenuse sigma x minus sigma y whole divided by 2 whole square tau x y square similarly we will be having the cos 2 theta as base upon hypotenuse so base upon hypotenuse sigma x minus sigma y whole divided by 2 and then tau x y square that's it now once we have got these values now we can place these two into the equation of this shear stress formula. 
So initially this uh, shear stress formula was uh, the shear stress at any x dash y dash plane. But since now we are placing the value of sine 2 theta and cos 2 theta derived from the plane where we are going to have the maximum shear stress. So the value of shear stress that we are getting here would be maximum. Now placing the values minus sigma y divided by 2. The sine 2 theta would be replaced with this big term. Let me write it down for you. Sigma x minus sigma y divided by 2. This is whole square, shear stress square. Similarly, for the next term, this is shear stress cos 2 theta. So, instead of cos 2 theta, we have this value tau xy that is being whole divided by this hypotenuse value. Alright then. So, let's simplify it further. So in both the terms, we have this hypotenuse as common. So we can take that as common and doing the calculations then. So the common hypotenuse. Now these two terms are same. So it will be squares and negative negative sign will become positive. And this is the same like we had. Now if we closely look at this equation, we can see that uh, this is same as that of this one so then this can be converted to let's say x so in the denominator then this will be under root x so this can be rewritten as x can be rewritten as uh, under root x multiplied by under root x then one under root will get cancelled so then we have been just left with under root x so same is the case here uh, when we do the calculations we are then just being left with under root this whole value in other words it's actually the hypotenuse of this right angle triangle so this will be then the final equation of maximum shear stress so if you want to calculate the maximum shear stress then we just should be knowing the normal stresses acting on x and y plane and shear stress acting on x y plane now next thing that we are going to calculate is the normal stress at a plane where we had the maximum shear stress so we are actually looking for the normal stresses at a plane of maximum shear. So recalling the equation to calculate the normal stress at x and y plane which is being rotated by theta counterclockwise. Now if we use this right angle triangle which is being taken when we are at a plane having maximum shear stress then we can have the value of sine 2 theta and cos 2 theta the same that we have obtained previously and then putting into these two equations. So then we are going to have the normal stress at x and y plane and that plane would be the one where we are having the maximum shear stress. Right then, so we had the sine 2 theta and cos 2 theta values. So let me quickly write it down here. Now putting these values in these equation, let's say for uh, sigma x first. So this sigma x will be now the normal stress at plane of maximum shear. So then this equation will become now instead of uh, cos 2 theta we have the value. Similarly, for sine 2 theta, we have the value from this right angle triangle. So, simplifying further, now you can see here that uh, this whole term and this whole term are equal, but they are with opposite sign. This is positive, but this is negative. So, as a result of this, these two will get cancelled. Then we are just being left with sigma x plus sigma y divided by 2. So, in a similar way, if you calculate the normal stress at y plane when we have the plane of maximum shear stress, 
this term will remain same now for this term uh, we have the value of cos 2 theta and sine 2 theta first place the value of cos 2 theta then the value of sine 2 theta again you can see that these two terms will be same but with opposite sign this will be negative and this will be positive so again we are being just left with the same term which is this sigma x plus sigma y so it means the normal stress at x and y plane would be equal and that is sigma x plus sigma y divided by 2 at the plane of maximum shear stress so ultimately now we have got the three equations one equation is that of the maximum shear stress which is sigma x minus sigma y divided by 2 whole square tau x y square so this was the equation to calculate the maximum shear stress and we have the another two equations of uh, shear stress at x and shear stress at y both was equal and this is at a plane where we are having the maximum shear and these are equal to sigma x plus sigma y divide by 2. So in this video we have got two equations one for the maximum shear stress so at the plane where we are having the maximum shear stress what will be the normal stress so that is also being uh, calculated so this is all from this video where we have learned about the plane where we are going to have the maximum shear stress we have derived the formula for the maximum shear and also we come to know that the plane where we are having the maximum shear at that plane how we can calculate the normal stresses so this is all from this video i hope you have now got the concept how we can calculate the maximum shear stress and the normal stresses at the plane where we are having the maximum shear so this is all from this video thank you for watching this video